Here we are, uh, mid-2016. Uh, there's a lot of forces in the marketplace, geopolitical forces from the uncertainty in Greece, China, uh, now Brexit. Give us your perspective on these events. What you've said is that politics are trumping economics in the short term. And that's very different from what has been the case since 2009. Since 2009, the improvement in the economies has really justified a risk-on perspective for the investor. But into 2016, Politics has become much more important, and I suspect that will stay the case at least through the autumn and the U.S. presidential election. It's important to, um, to see that uncertainty is not the same as risk. Markets hate uncertainty, but that doesn't necessarily imply a bad outcome. And in fact, beneath all of this, you've seen some pretty significant healing in the global economies. Um, that in my opinion set us up for a much better equity environment probably from Q4 of this year into 2018. I, I think the odds of a recession in the US are very low and I view this slowdown of the last year as a typical intracycle or mid-cycle uh, slowdown in long expansion and the US has had five or six of these in the last hundred years and each of them was resolved by um, some sort of catalyst, monetary, fiscal, or exogenous, that led the economy to reaccelerate. So it sounds like your belief is that the U.S. economy is in relatively good shape. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the risks to the U.S. economy? The two risks, um, in my mind, are dollar strength and populist politics. Um, dollar strength would be a risk because I think it would only happen if the overseas economies failed to gain traction and it would signify another round of deflation overseas and central bank impotence. My view is that actually the dollar has entered a long trading range and that's driven by my belief that the overseas economies are finally on the path to improvement, even in Europe. The the populist politics that we're seeing is causing short-term uncertainty and that can have an impact on economies. It's certainly going to have a short-term impact in the UK. So in summary, uh, I guess your view on the US is bullish, uh, not recessionary, and will still grow at a reasonable rate, providing great opportunity for, uh, for stock selection. Yes, the market in the last year has, in effect, digested the gains of 2013, 2014. And last year we saw an earnings recession and we saw the Fed talking about tighter monetary policy. Now that's usually not a good mix for equities, so it's not surprising that we've, we've drifted sideways. Equities here in the US are fairly valued, by which I mean they're within 10% of where they've historically traded in this sort of, of inflation environment. The problem is not valuation, the problem is the earnings cycle. We need to see earnings growth reaccelerate, and the, the answer to that is better global GDP. The world has been desynchronized for eight years. If the Fed can ultimately engineer more synchronized growth globally, I think you'd very quickly see a renewed earnings cycle, and that would be your catalyst to get you out of this, this broad trading range. But until that happens, I, I think equities are very much caught in this trading range. I think this election is important because we need to break the obstructionism in the legislative branch uh, and ultimately use fiscal policy as the tremendous tool that it is. So the, the, the problem for this economy is um, uh, inadequate aggregate demand. And when you're in that situation, you turn to the spender of last resort, and that's, that's the government. So as you think about the Federal Reserve's policies of the last eight years post-crisis, what is your view on where you, we are now and where they are likely to go? Ultimately monetary policy can't carry the whole burden of resolving the issues here. You need more cooperation between the Fed and the legislative branch of government. Um, the earlier model under Bernanke was to raise the value of financial assets and help this imbalance between assets and debt that was everywhere in the economy and that succeeded. But um, ultimately the long-term business model of this economy will only work if you get incomes growing and wages growing. And that's Janet Yellen's priority. Janet Yellen 
in effect has said she's going to run the economy hot. She's going to allow incomes to, to keep growing and stay behind that curve um, because if you can't get the middle class benefiting from the expansion, I, I think we really have reached, um, reached the limits of what the government can do. And that goes back to my point that fiscal policy has got to pick up the baton from the central banks. Speaking of the rate cycle, do you believe the U.S. Federal Reserve will push uh, rates into negative territory and what would be the implications on the U.S. economy? I think it's very unlikely. In the few countries where negative rates has been implemented, um, there's very little anecdotal evidence that it's actually worked. There's certainly no evidence that it's improved the credit transmission cycle through the banking system. Um, and to some degree, I believe the Fed is coming to the view that negative interest rates are the essence of deflation. I know economic textbooks might say something different, but if you implemented negative rates here, I, I think the public reaction, the consumer reaction, um, would be negative. But most importantly, we don't have deflation in the United States. Inflation is running at a 2% plus clip, and inflation simply is driven by some mix of house prices and wage rates, right? House prices are going up, people are getting wealthier, wage rates are going up, you have uh, healthy income growth. So I, I really don't see any setting where we are likely to get negative interest rates here in the United States um, on the assumption, my assumption, that we're not going to see recession for another few years.